Welcome to a new video about differential amplifiers using BGTs. This is our example number five. We continue with the improvement of our current source for our differential pair. In this case, we look at the cascode current source. And cascode current source is actually an improvement of the simple current mirror where you have now two on top of each other. That's why it's called cascode. We will see the necessary calculation for this example also step by step and also verify our calculations using TNTI SPICE simulations. Okay, let's look at our circuit. This is now the circuit in the differential pair format for our BGTs. And you see here the CAS code current source. The values for the components in the circuit all shown here. What we need to recognize that the Q1 and Q2 aren't matched. And the early voltage for that one, for those two transistors are assumed to be infinite. For Q3, Q4, Q5 and Q6, they're also matched, but they have an early voltage of 60 volts, so there's not infinite. For all transistors, we assume that the beta is 150 and also the base emitter uh, junction has 0.7 volts. What we like to calculate is the balance differential mode voltage gain, the common mode voltage gain, and also the balance common mode rejection ratio using the answers from question A and B. So let's look at our solutions. First one, the calculations. Before we move on, let's designate the current here already given, by the way, which is IM. This is the reference current created by the resistor and also the transistor and the source VE. And we can now make the DC analysis for this circuit using Kirchhoff's voltage law. So we start here and then end actually at the other ground point. So you make this look, you say voltage across RM plus voltage across the base emitter junction for Q6, which is the VBE6 and also the VBE3, because that's for Q3, and also the VE, adding up to zero. This is straightforward Kirchhoff's current law from circuit analysis. Now we'd like, we'd like to calculate the IM, which is the necessary information here for uh, the next steps. Now we can place all these three terms on the right side, will be all negative, divided by RM. Remember here the VEE is itself negative, so it will be the minus minus, 20 and then minus 0 0.7 minus 0 0.7 divided by the RM which is given here and you'll get now here 2.050 milliamps. Okay, that's our next step, uh, first step. The next step is that looking at the cascode current source which is then formed by these four resistors and also the uh, RM of course. Now for that there is a relationship between the tail current IX and the IM. This is also including the early voltage effect by, by these transistors if the early voltage effect is not there so if for example for the Q3 up to Q6 all the transistor here has an infinite early voltage then this ratio will be then just 1 over 1 plus 4 beta plus 2 over beta square so you will lose the second term in the num numerator and also the third term in the denominator now adding these terms will make it more accurate it, the error is not that much, but it is more accurate, so we need to add them up. I don't go into the derivation of this one. There's not that much an issue, but it is uh, some uh, time-consuming business, so I'm just giving the result right away. And when you now substitute the values we have given, because we know what the VA5 is and VA6, and also the base emitter voltages, and also the beta, so just substitute everything in it, you get now here 0.9745. That means Ix will be then multiplied by this, uh, will be equal to this uh, factor times the Im, which is our reference curve. So it is not a one to one copy. So you see actually that you lose some part of it. So that will then result in this 1.964 milliamps. So you lose some uh, by copying this in this fashion. Now, since Q1 and Q2 are matched, that's also shown here, they have also the same bias uh, voltage, so they are biased at the same potential. We can assume that the transconductance of Q1 and also the transconductance of the Q2, GM1 and GM2, are equal to each other. So we can just define one GM, which will be used later for question A and B, and that is just GM, and then we can calculate that using this straightforward formula, which requires our DC collector current, divided by the thermal voltage, which is 26 millivolts at, uh, at the room temperature, let's say approximately 300 Kelvin. IC1 and IC2, so this one and that one are exactly equal to each other because the system is symmetric. So the next step is IC1 and IC2. Let's designate also the emitter current for Q1 and also the emitter current for Q2. 
that means because these are symmetric, the circuit is symmetric, that means the Ix, which is here, 1.964 milliamps, will be uh, split into uh, equal parts. But since IE1 is also not exactly equal to IC1, so IC1 is a little bit smaller because of this base current, we need to have this ratio, beta over beta plus 1. And since IE1 is Ix over 2, so we have now the full expression, which is 150 over 151. And then you get this for, uh, for our Ix from the first analysis, and you get now 0 0.9755 milliamps. So it is not exactly a half of, let's say, this what we had before, but it is close. Now, since we have this IC1, which is also equal to IC2, we can calculate now the transconductance. Just substitute the value here. You get now here 0 0.0375 Siemens. Okay. Let's collect now the current values and also our GM here. And now look at the next calculation. Actually, the first calculation for our first, uh, first question A. The balance differential mode voltage gain will be given by this. So VOD is differential mode output voltage divided by the differential mode input voltage. So you apply between the base of the Q1 and Q2 uh, differential signal, which is small AC. And this, this will result if you do the small signal analysis. GM times RC minus GM times RC. The GM we know, RC is given in the circuit. So we have here now minus 375. It is inverted, so they will see that if you apply here, uh, let's say positive here and negative there, you will have an inverted version between these two nodes, so that is actually the effect of this minus. Now, the balance common mode voltage gain is given by, first, let me first go to the single-ended uh, common mode voltage gain, because that is easier to understand what's going on. This V01, which is one of the outputs, so this is just this collector voltage of the Q1 divided by the common mode input voltage that's actually when you have the q1 and q2 the bases connected to each other and then you apply just one signal so in this case this is not the common mode operation this is the differential mode you short these two bases and then just apply for both input the same voltage this is actually the expression for that one and again you see the minus sign and it's similar to the balanced differential mode voltage gain but you see in the numerator or i mean denominator one plus the gm times two ro what is RO? The R this is, by the way, the single ended output. What is RO? RO is the impedance or the resistance looking at the collector of Q5. Now, for that, we need to look at the formula. Again, this is uh, just without the derivation produced here, but this can be derived when you do the small signal analysis carefully, which is then the beta of Q5 times the dynamic output resistance of that Q5. But for that, R05, so small letter R05, we need the early voltage. And the effect of the early voltage will be then calculated here. And then the R05 is related to the early voltage divided by the collector current, DC collector current of the Q5. But DC collector current of Q5 is Ix. So we just substitute here also the 60 from the early voltage divided by what we had before. And you get now here 30.55 kilo ohms. Now this will be then here, and this is 150. So this will be then 150 times what we just calculated for our R05. And you have now almost 4.6 mega ohms, which is quite high. This is, by the way, one of the improvements compared to the uh, Wilson current source, because Wilson current source had an output impedance looking here, which was two times smaller. So we actually increased now the output impedance by a factor of two which will also increase your common mode rejection ratio by a factor of 2, which is 6 dB, and that will decrease your common mode gain by a factor of 2, which is actually just a consequence of that one. But getting back to the signal and the output, because the balanced common mode voltage gain is expressed also this way, because the VO1 is equal to VO2, because these two nodes have the same potential, same value, it is also in phase, so they're exact same. So measuring between these two will give you just zero. And the definition is actually in this, one of the output is just your common mode output voltage. And that is this expression. Now we know now the RO, and just now uh, substituting this expression, you get now a very small value, which is minus 0 0.001 or 0 0.0011 approximately. So very, very small compared to that. So the ratio is, will be now very high. Okay, now looking at the common mode rejection ratio, again, the absolute value of the balanced common mode, balanced differential mode voltage gain 
and the balance column voltage gain. You look at it and you divide it by, you get now we have 344 times 10 to the power 3, and then dBs, that will be then 110.7 dBs. In the previous example, example number 4, again using this differential pair, pair with the BGTs, and then here we had the Wilson current source. This was 104.7 dB, so it was actually 6 dB less. So we have now improved the common mode rejection ratio by 6 dB, and that is the result of this uh, doubling of that output impedance, actually. So that is really an effect of that one. Let's now look at the simulation result. First, we started the DC analysis. This is for the differential mode, the left side, and this is for the common mode. You see, actually, now this is 2.017 milliamps for our IM, which is okay close and this IX is 1.967 milliamps also very close and the IC one here is 0 0.9762 milliamp also very close you see also the IC one and IC are the exact same what you also see that for the common mode part everything is also the same so you see that the DC operation doesn't matter if you have a differential mode or common mode circuit so we can say this is verified Let's jump to the next analysis, this is our AC analysis, body plots or frequency speed. This is frequency, this is the gain, just the gain. And we look at now the differential mode. Again, the circuit is now in differential mode configuration. You see the low frequency gain in dB is 51.35. Yeah, when you convert that to scalar, it will be at 369, which is close to absolute value of 375. So we can say this is also verified. You also see some extra information about the cutoff frequency, just to make sure that this is also as an information here. Going to the common mode plot, this is for the common mode uh, region, again the frequency and the gain only, low frequency gain is here, minus 56.56 dB. Now when you convert that units in dBs to scalar value, you get now here, using this formula, 0 0.00149, which is a little bit larger than that one, maybe that is due to some uh, errors we have or maybe the model is not perfectly what we have expected but again I say it's perfectly fine S still small because if I call this 0 0.0011 and this is 0 0.0015 so you might say this is okay good enough so just really depends on how accurate you want your common mode gain now the next step is a transient response looking at the differential mode looking first let's say just focusing on the there are more plots by the way just looking at the differential mode input voltage the blue one and this is the red one which is the differential mode output voltage you see it's 10 millivolts peak so and has a one kilohertz uh, frequency and the output is inverted because we have a minus sign so again that is the proof already and the peak peak value here and a peak peak value here we can then use that and then Use a ratio and then you can calculate it will be then minus 365, which is smaller than what we have, but it's not a really big difference. So we can say this is also fine for all practical purposes. Moving on to the next and also the final analysis from the simulation, which is our common mode uh, voltage gain. Now the common mode voltage gain will be very small, so I apply now for the common mode input, not 10 millivolts peak, but 5 volts peak. So I make then 10 volts peak peak just to see that effect the output uh, clearly. You see again the blue one is the input common mode and the VO1 or VO2 are one of the outputs you take it but this, these are exact same also in phase so you can see actually that this is by the way given in uh, less accuracy but this is the exact same as that one and if you look at the pink one and the blue one you compare now the peak peak value of the pink one divided by the pink peak peak value of the blue one that's shown here you get now minus 0 0.00149 again very uh, some in the vicinity of what we have calculated so we can say this is also perfectly fine and we see also that because of some errors in our model etc there are some differences but it's still close so we can say this is uh, good enough and also we have verified our calculations in this fashion and this is also better uh, design than using the wilson current source definitely better than the simple resistor or simple current error all right this is our fifth example about the differential pair using the BGTs and the, some advanced uh, current source here using the CAS code of, of configuration. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.